Ladies and gentlemen, this is my I can't believe I missed that I'm such an idiot face. So yesterday I posted a build that used a fast attacking mana strike to proc lots of frost claws to spawn lots of meteors with the Harbinger of Stars belt from crits. And I liked it a lot. It looked like this. It did good damage, but I was lamenting the fact that it was melee and I kept getting killed due to having to get close to enemies. And then some nice guy on Reddit said, that's really cool, but have you considered making mana strike ranged? And this whole time I didn't even consider it because I thought the mana gain wouldn't be enough. Turns out it's just as good, if not better. So let's go over the gear first, then the passives, and then the skills and specializations. I'll also post a link to the build planner and a simple loot filter in the description below. So first off with the gear, I want to say I'm sick of always having to juggle resistances. I always feel like I'm short somewhere. Anyways, the stats you want for this build are increased critical strike chance, critical strike multiplayer, attack speed, and spell damage. And then lightning penetration if you can get it. As you can see here, I've got these pretty much everywhere I can place them. You're also going to want to get yourself a Harbinger Stars Belt and Velatria's Downfall Set, the Staff, and the Crown. Other than that, it's just about balancing your resistances with defense. You either want 100% reduced bonus damage from crits or 100% crit avoidance. I like reduced damage from crits because it comes with armor which also gives you a little bit of extra damage mitigation. You can also run a Life Leech Ward version of this build if you get yourself a Last Steps of the Living Boots and one of these experimental uh, health loss per second, ward gain per second affixes. Again, as long as you get some Leech in your passives, you should be able to keep this up while still keeping a healthy amount of ward. Looking at passives, we're going to be putting points into all four different trees. Basically, we're going to be hunting and pecking around for intelligence, increased critical strike chance, critical multiplier, and mitigation where we can find it. Starting in the mage tree, we're going to get one into scholar, an eight into arcanist, one into reactive ward, five into mage flurry, and ten into knowledge of destruction. If you want, you could put five into this and have five somewhere else. In the Spellblade tree, we're going to put two into Elemental Affinity, eight into Arcane Warden, five into Warden's Echo, five into Arcane Shielding, five into Shattered Aegis. These are going to be for damage mitigation. This is going to be for extra Frost Claw generation. We want to make a lot of multi-hitting spells for a lot of crits, for a lot of meteors. We're also going to be putting 5 points into Essence Duel for extra attack speed and a little bit of ward generation. In the Rune Master tree, we're only going to be picking up Unsealed Mana for the 5 point bonus. This is going to give us a mana and ward burst every 3 hits when we're attacking with Mana Strike. I used to pick up the 5 point bonus here in Rune Ward Cataclysm for the extra 15 damage, 15% 15 damage, and critical strike chance. Now this is only for low health enemies, and I just didn't feel like it was worth it. Because I had so much damage, I was killing everything quickly. In the Sorcerer Tree, we're going to be picking up Calculated Destruction for Intelligence and Increased Crit Chance per Intelligence. Mana Shell. It points into Afterglow. Now this 4 point bonus only procs when you direct cast Meteor. So consider casting that every now and then to get 
the double bonus. We're also going to put a point into Serranomancer to get over here to Rift Bolt for Lightning Penetration and Leech. Crackling Precision for increased crit chance. Up here, Arcane Insight for Intelligence and some Warden Decay Threshold. And then I like to get Arcane Current because this is a further multiplier for lightning damage. Um, increased damage to shocked enemies. And then I think I'm level 94 or 5, so the next few points I get I would probably put into Arcane Obliteration or perhaps Archmage or Mana Well. Moving on to skills and specializations, our main attack is going to be Mana Strike. So this used to be a melee build until I was told to try teleporting strikes. Since then, I've respected it to increased mana efficiency, I guess. So we're going to put three points into Arcanist Blade for extra mana gained on hits. Swift Sap for increased attack speed. And then move up here, Rage Sap. And then Teleporting Strikes to make it a ranged attack. And then I like Star Guide for a little more crit and auto-targeting. So you can just hold down the button and run around. We're also going to put a point into Sprite Blade for a little bit of extra area. And we're going to move down to Mana Drain for extra mana on hits. And then Critical Mana for extra mana on crits. And then Critical Rejuvenation for increased crit chance. We don't care about the multiplier because we're only using this to regenerate our mana supply. In the Frost Claw tree, we're mainly specking for increased mana efficiency and getting multiple attacks off rocked from our mana strike hits. So we're going to have three points into Shiver Shell, one into Rowan's Veil, and three points into this one I can't pronounce. <laughs> but this one's important. It's going to give us a chance to cast Frost Claw on melee hits. Up here, we're going to have Gift of Winter for mana efficiency, Artor's Scepter, and then over here, Spark Artillery to turn it into Lightning, and then more efficiency and a little bit of projectile speed here with Spark of Celerity. Moving down, we're going to get Fen and the Frozen, three points into Bright Frost, and then into Powerward Hail, and Morditas, and Volley of Glass. These two are important because they increase the amount of hits and therefore the number of crits we're getting for our procs for Frostclaw. Meteor is our big damage spell. This comes from critical hits proc by the Harbinger of Stars Belt. We're going to start off by taking two points into Crushing Force, two points into Defernal Descent, both of these are multipliers, four points into Stardust, this is also a multiplier. Now only get this if you're playing Lightning. If you aren't using the Velatria's set, take those points and put them into Craterborn instead for the extra fire penetration. Then over on this side we're going to go for extra meteors and more crit multiplier. So one point force of impact, three into extinction, three into astral cataclysm, and then for the extra meteors we go over here and get rapid descent, twin meteors, this is another multiplier, three points into distant craters, meteor shower, rapid impacts, and rain of fire. If you find that you're having mana problems, due to insufficient crit rate or something, consider taking maybe a point out of Stardust or one of these and investing in Mana Fall for better Meteor mana efficiency. But I haven't been using it because I haven't had any problems with that, so I just added them for extra damage. So Flame Ward is our main defensive buff with a little bit of offense mixed in. On the left side, we're gonna take Dilation for increased duration. Infusion for extra damage, switch it to Lightning with Lightning Ward, more damage with Through Flames, and then we're going to gain Haste when it's on with Flame Runner. Over on this side, I used to move down into this area to get Ward and reduced elemental damage and less hit damage. That was when I was playing melee. Now that I have it ranged, I switched and went Stalwart Defense and then up for Desperate Defense. Feel the flames, and then over here to dual ages to get a second charge. Enchant weapon is our main damage buff. On the left here, we're taking celerity for increased attack speed, 
Fulminate. And then Conduit. This is the important one. So when you turn on Enchant Weapon, you're going to shock everything around you. And then you want to get Capacitance to increase the shock frequency. That's going to create extra crits for more Meteors. Over on this side, you take extra duration for concentration, efficacy for reduced mana cost, and then if you could get an extra point, maybe you could put one into Kindling Blade to have it automatically recast. But personally, I like to have the option to only turn it on when I encounter really dangerous enemies for that extra damage boost. Put that all together and you get something that looks like this. One small tip, I like to hold down both the mana strike and move buttons at the same time. That lets you kind of do a stagger step attack. It's just nice for moving and attacking, going a little bit faster, keeping out of danger, stuff like that. So that's all there is to it. Attack speed, crit chance, crit multiplier, intelligence, balanced defenses. I hope you guys use this and enjoy it. I hope someone theory crafts it more and adds perhaps more ward generation, more survivability of some kind. There's plenty of damage there right now, so that's not a problem. Enjoy! Cheers! If you like the video or subscribe to the channel, I got extra treats!